Hello, you are listening to Germantown Community Radio, WRGU 92.9 FM. Welcome to the Jumpstart Philly Real Estate Radio Show, a weekly radio program that spotlights positive real estate development and neighborhood revitalization throughout Philadelphia. I'm your host, Derek Hengemill. Jumpstart Philly is a unique community development program that trains, mentors, networks, and provides funding to aspiring real estate developers in seven different Philadelphia neighborhoods, including Germantown, where the program was founded. Jumpstart believes that you can do well by doing good and focuses on removing neighborhood blight, scattered site rehab, creating a healthy mix of affordable and market rate housing, and avoiding gentrification through slow, steady growth and keeping wealth local. Interviews are conducted during Jumpstart Germantown's weekly Jumpinar series on Monday nights at 7 p.m. held via Zoom webinar. For more information about these events, check out the events page at jumpstartgermantown.com slash events. This week, I will be speaking with Elizabeth Beckett, who is the president of Real Estate Strategies Incorporated and RES Advisors, about strategies for market research and how you can conduct your own market analysis when approaching investments. I hope you enjoyed the conversation, and be sure to check out the podcast version of this program at jumpstartgermantown.com slash media. Um, but yeah, I think other than that, we're good to get started, and I want to introduce our patient guest, Elizabeth Beckett, who is uh, president of Real Estate Strategies and has over 30 years of real estate market analysis experience in the mid-Atlantic region. And Beth assists clients, including market rate and affordable housing, affordable apartment developers, home builders, landowners, and commercial developers. And by providing market insights that lead to feasible and successful projects. And Beth attended Haverford College and holds a Master of Public Administration degree from the Fells Institute of Government at the University of Penn. So thank you for uh, joining us tonight, Beth. And, and how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I um, I. I'm a big fan of Jumpstart, and I'm just thrilled to be able to be here tonight and uh, share whatever I can that would be helpful. Cool. And you spoke at, um, sorry, I'm just bringing up my notes here. You spoke at another Jumpstart program recently as well, right? I did. I spoke uh, uh, to the Wilmington Jumpstarters. Uh, so that was uh, that was fun. I guess that's a newer uh, iteration of Jumpstart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They're they're new, but they're probably going to reach their fiftieth one we'll close sometime soon. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Um, great. So I think we can jump right into the conversation. And obviously, our our wide range topic is strategies for market research, but there's a lot to cover within that. Um, so before we really dive into the topic, uh, maybe you can just go over your background a little bit and tell me about like what experiences have taught you all about research and or, or market research and how to analyze the market. Um, you're the president of Real Estate Strategies, so maybe start there and, and work back. Okay. Um, I am the president of Real Estate Strategies. We're a woman-owned uh, real estate advisory services firm. We've been um, in business, gosh, I have to think, since uh, 1995. Um, we're based in the Philadelphia area, and we work, I think, as you mentioned, Derek, mid-Atlantic, but also we've been invited to work all over the country, so we've been really lucky to have been we've been in Detroit and um, New Orleans and Atlanta and a couple other places so um, I grew up actually in uh, in uh, right outside of Wilmington and so my interest in this whole field really started as I was growing up and spending a lot of time in that city which was undergoing significant revitalization both in the downtown and in the neighborhood so I kind of got a taste for the field just watching what was happening. Yeah so that sounds like a a wide range of geographies and different markets how about um, you know like scale of development what what type of of advising are you doing? Sure so about half of our work is project specific so we're doing this for a developer who's either trying to get public funding or bank financing um, or just shape their project, get some insight into shaping their project. Uh, The other half is in the context of uh, like larger planning efforts. So reuse of major sites, uh, corridor revitalization. We're providing the um, market reality to the planning (laughs) exercise. Um, But in terms of the individual project sizes, probably in terms of multifamily buildings, because I think most 
most jump starters, right, are focused in the yeah. residential sector. So probably about 60 units, 50 or 60 units. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, and I think it's important to mention. Yeah, I think it's important to mention too that even though you're you're developing multi-unit properties, everything you're you're teaching is it's all fundamentals, right? It's it's it should work for anything, no matter what the scale is. Absolutely. So what we're going to talk about tonight is sort of a a discipline or a you know a sort of a checklist mm -hmm. um, that we use when we when we do anything. I mean, we do different types of consulting as well, economic development consulting, but it all comes back to this way of thinking about real estate markets. So my hope is that um, even folks who are starting on their first unit developing can start to learn how to think like a, a market analyst. Right. And the goal for anybody should be to scale up to that level, right? So even though we're talking about like single family home developments that jump starters might be more, uh, you know, apt to, to be developing, um, like, Eventually, they're going to be be scaling up and using all that success in the beginning to do projects Absolutely. at the center. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, so my next question is: is it might seem pretty basic, but I want to hear the answer in your words. And, and what does market analysis mean to a jumpstarter? And, and why should why should they care about knowing how to analyze the market or, or doing market research? Sure. So the information that you can glean from market research, first of all, can help you make a decision about what kind of land use you are going to spend your time working on, mm -hmm. uh, what's going to be successful in your in the geographic area you've decided to work in. So is it just single family homes that you're going to flip? Is it maybe a small multifamily building, maybe mixed use with a retail store on the, on the first floor? So, you know, just strategically, um, that, that's sort of the first level of, of benefit from thinking like a market analyst. Mm -hmm. um, moving sort of down the, the funnel a little bit more, um, it, market analysis will help you evaluate specific sites and investment opportunities and decide, mm -hmm. is this, a good, is this good, a good option for me? Mm -hmm. um, and if you decide on that, then market analysis is going to help you figure out how do I price this? What kind of features do I need? Mm -hmm. Should I take that big bedroom and make it into two additional bedrooms? Yeah. Um, it's going to help you with that um, uh, development program. Yeah. And one thing that uh, Ke Kevin Gillen discussed about that was sort of it's like this. It's like a market, like any market, like the stock market or the cryptocurrency market or anything like that. Like the more you you know about it, and the, the more you know how to navigate it, the more successful you're going to be, right? Absolutely. And the and the um, I always like to say, the thing you have to bring to the process is an open mind, because I don't know about you, but um, real estate is an emotional decision for a lot of people, right? When you buy your own house, or if you grown up in a neighborhood. I grew up in a neighborhood where five generations of my family lived on this little street. Mm -hmm. So I think it's priceless, but that's not what the appraisers say. Um, right. And mm -hmm. so I think since particularly since Jumpstart is about people perhaps working in neighborhoods where they have a connection, mm -hmm. it's really important to train yourself to kind of bring an outside perspective to those decisions. Yeah, I guess like knowing where the best place to buy is, and like I guess first it's going to help you monetarily, but secondly it's going to help the community, right? Because you're, you're you're knowing where where needs support and and like where where the development is shifting to, so you're not just like doing you're not profit seeking, I guess. Well, but I, and I think success, right? Success is great for wealth building for you as a developer, mm -hmm. and it's great for the neighborhood. Whereas failure, not good for you, and also not good for surrounding property owners to have something sitting vacant, yeah. right? Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. Great. Um, so, so, and something you mentioned there in your answer was, like, you need to start to think like a market analyst. So, so what does thinking like a market analyst mean more than just like reading a headline and making a decision based on that, or like, or seeing a Redfin, Redfin sale value or something and, and, acting on a hunch, what, do, like, what does that mean to think like a market analyst rather than just like do like one? <laughs> sure, um, shall we talk about the process a little yeah. bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. So, um, and I think that'll give you a sense. So, you know, we're talking about a disciplined way of, 
of thinking. So the components of market analysis, right, are location, mm -hmm. um, supply, and demand, right? I think most people could probably, if you ask them, what, what would I be mm -hmm. being involved with if I was doing market analysis, you would mm -hmm. come to that conclusion. But let's talk a little bit about what that means, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the six steps, six steps of market analysis. So number one is, as I just mentioned, assessing the location. I'm assuming that you guys have had a lot of training about evaluating the property itself. Is it, mm -hmm. you know, is it sound, you know, it doesn't have any catastrophic foundation problems. Mm -hmm. um, but let's talk about the, you know, the location. When you do that, you have to think a little bit like your prospective tenant or your prospective buyer, right? From that perspective, not just, hey, I got my hands on this property, so mm -hmm. it must be good. So you're putting yourself into the shoes of your tenant or your buyer, and you're looking at the surrounding land uses, and are they positives or negatives? You're looking at the visibility of that property, which affects how you can market it. Um, is it accessible? Um, what are the what's the proximity to services and amenities and transit is there a crime issue does the character of this area change at different times of day or yeah. on the weekend versus uh the weekday so right. that's you know we want to understand that you want to understand that just because you want to make a smart acquisition but you also need to understand that so you can see how you stack up against your competition whether you've got a superior situation or inferior Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number two, and it probably it sounds like Kevin Gillen talked about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Number two is to, to understand the bigger trends that are going on. Um, and, and that should be something as jump starters that you're doing now. You probably are doing it because you're interested, but you know, you're reading articles in the Inquirer and the business journal about what's going on. Um, in Philadelphia, but it's worthwhile to understand bigger trends. What has COVID meant for apartment features that people are looking for? What has it meant for retail? Um, so that's a big context within which you're thinking like a market analyst. Um, number three, so we talked about location, we looked about overarch we talked about overarching trends. Number three is um, defining or understanding the competitive market area in which your property is going to be functioning and competing. So what is that geography? I guess Jumpstart started in Germantown, right? Yep. So are you, you know, you're redoing a property. Do you feel like you are uh, competing primarily with other rentals in Germantown? Maybe you're at one end of the neighborhood or the other, maybe Maybe Nice Town is part of your competitive area, or maybe it's Mount Airy. Um, but really being informed about what that competitive area and kind of locking that into your head because it's going to affect how you evaluate the competition and also how you think about marketing that property. So that's number three. So you've got your market area. You've got it nailed down. So now you need to research your competitive supply. What's out there? Who are the competitors? What are they charging? What's, what products are renting? What products aren't? That's always just as important. Um, and as you're researching that and also understanding the trends, are prices going up? Are prices going down? Are certain types of product really just flying off the shelf, so to speak? Um, you're looking at this point, you're not looking necessarily just at the huge big trends that are going on, but you're looking specifically in that geographic area, what's going on. So now we're up to number four. Now we're up to number five. Okay. Right. And, and number five is thinking about the economic and demographic characteristics of the folks in your competitive market area or in a broader area from which you think you're going to draw potential renters mm -hmm. or purchasers. You know, how much, how much money do they make? Can, what, can they afford the prices that you need to make to uh, make this an economically feasible deal? Um, what's, what are their household sizes like? What's their life stage like? If you are building a five bedroom house with lots of stairs in it and you have a growing senior population 
in right. your market area, you might want to rethink that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's number five, understanding economic and demographic characteristics. And then number six is bringing it all together. What, you know, I thought my way through steps one, one through five. What does that mean for me? Am I going to acquire this property? What is, how am I going to position it? How am I going to price it? Um, mm -hmm. who are, who's my target renter or target buyer? And how am I going to reach those people? Right, right. And I guess that, that decision culminates in like your project, you're creating a project pro forma or your scope of work or, or you know, you're putting together comps for a lender or something like that. That's where, the, like you said, it all kind of ties together, right? Exactly. And, you know, it's a good thing you brought that up, Derek. So you're talking, we were talking at the beginning about being, a, you know, working on individual properties, being at the scale that folks who are starting out in the Jumpstart program are working in. But just because you're not commissioning a third party report, which you will be doing someday when your properties are 50, 60, 75 units, um, you can be informed and you can look at an appraisal, right? Or look at the comps the lender is, is holding up as maybe a reason that they're skeptical of your project. And you can be informed and make the case because you've gone through this thought process and be an advocate for yourself in, in getting your financing. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to quickly just draw the similarities to our discussion last week, which was uh, our topic was residential appraisals. And, and I asked our guest Felix, he walked through the, you know, from the appraisals, appraiser standpoint, like what their process is for determining the market value. And uh, it sounds fairly similar to this. So it's like, it's kind of like everybody's using this, this similar, similarly minded strategy and all these tools, it's just about putting them together, like sp specifically for what your goals are, it sounds like. Um, absolutely. absolutely. And the fact that this has been mutually reinforcing, I think probably hammers home the point of sort of the, the mindset, I guess, of folks who've been involved in real estate. Uh, yeah. This is what the jumpstart community, this is what people are getting, you know, getting yeah. into. And so it's a good illustration of the kinds of things that are important in, in the thought process. Yeah, it's it's the fundamentals really. Like like we talked it about getting how even though you're typically advising to to 50, 60 unit apartment building owners, same thing here. Same thing with single family and a residential great <laughs> If you're just tuning in, this is a conversation with Elizabeth Beckett, the president of Real Estate Strategies Incorporated, about strategies for market research and her tips for market analysis for aspiring developers. Thank you for listening to the Jumpstart Philly Real Estate Radio Show on Germantown Community Radio, WRGU 92.9 FM. I hope you're enjoying the discussion. So, uh, okay, and then we, we just covered the process and you walked through those six steps. So maybe now let's talk about the implementation and how how each individual person in this call is going to like tie their project into that process. Um, and and I understand you have three tools that you can share with us. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and once we get through the tools, then I, I was taking some notes and I have some questions on, uh, you, you mentioned some things like apartment features and and barriers in the market and how do you know like what neighborhoods divided up what way and i want to ask you those in in okay. context of your answer uh for, for the right. tool so um yeah i guess we always have to have a number right six steps three tools i i tend to think of them as three buckets of mm -hmm. um of information or ways of collecting information right. and one of the things that um goes a long way to helping you keep an open mind and helping you feel confident in your decision making is using different approaches to gathering information to, to sort of test. You know, I, uh, I heard this, you know, when I talked to so-and-so, when I interviewed some, so-and-so, mm -hmm. oh, look, that agrees with this article or, or this data. Mm -hmm. So as we're talking about these three buckets of research approaches, um, think about that. So first thing, right, you all know, real estate is an, it, you have to be present, right? It's one of those things that's really not done successfully, totally remotely. So field work, being on the ground, actually seeing the surroundings of your property, 
seeing uh, how the neighborhood functions, seeing the competition, right? So field work, um, that's critical. We're out there, we're taking pictures, we're visiting neighborhoods at different times of day. Um, that's how we're, we're thinking about the competitive environment and our subject property. Um, data, right? So data is Zillow and Trulia and some of the things that are published by the brokerage houses and a zillion other things like that and the Census Bureau and information from planning department in mm -hmm. Philly and all of that type of stuff that gives you um, that someone else has done the research and you're benefiting from. Um, so data. And then the last thing is primary research and interviewing. So um, we interview people like crazy when we do um, uh, market studies. So we are talking to realtors and property managers, not necessarily of the competition, but just people who are active mm -hmm. in the area. We're talking to the planner, the community planner. If we have a special population, let's say there's gonna be veterans, it's a veterans housing uh, project. We're talking to the agencies that deal with vets. Um, so we're not just relying now on the data that we see that says there are X number of people, but we're, we're talking to people who are, are in, the, in the weeds and, and what has their experience been and what are cautionary mm -hmm. tales. And th this bucket also includes um, getting information on the comps. You can do that by phone. You can do that by knocking on the door. Um, you can shop the property, but that's you know your upfront and personal understanding of what's going on with that competitive property. Gotcha. So then going back to the process and, and I'm just going to like pick a few things out and you can, sure. how, how about we do this? I'll, I'll recommend like something somebody might be looking for and you tell me which tool you think would be best. Okay. Um, like, like you said, for apartment features, like during the COVID pandemic, um, certain desires or, or things that people look for in their home have, have changed. How would you recommend somebody figure out what, you know, apartment feature they should include in their rental property? Sure. So first of all, um, reading, you know, you've been reading about uh, what, what different um, apartment specialists are saying is happening in the market, right? Mm -hmm. It's been really tough in student areas because colleges all went remote, um, not so much in outlying areas, blah, blah, blah. You know, so you, you that's, that's one Thing you're hearing about the property managers when, when we um, we were doing a, a study for somebody who wanted to do micro units and when we talked to property managers they were like <laughs> nobody will rent our small mm -hmm. units everybody wants extra space because they're afraid they're going to have to keep working mm -hmm. out of the units and they you know if they were a one bedroom renter they are scraping it together to be able to get two bedrooms or one bedroom with an alcove. Alcoves have become very popular. So, you know, what are you reading? And then is that re reality tested on the ground in your market area? Yeah. It, yeah. And I'm, I'm sure if you wanted to do field work, you could just go out and look and, and like find some, some rents or, or places that have been rented recently. Right. And knock on the door and say, Hey, could I tour? Yeah. Well, it's interesting you say that because of course that is the thing that's been uh, a little bit difficult during yeah. COVID, right? I <laughs> yeah. mean, most yeah. leasing, leasing offices are uh, working or have been working remotely. Um, so, you know, you have to shift a little bit, right? If the, if the tool is a video tour, the unit, you're going to be doing a video tour of the unit. So. Yeah. I, I think it's, it was, I, I couldn't help but chuckle a little bit when you we were talking about how it's impossible to, to do real estate work over Zoom and everything. Here we are, uh, you know, a year later doing Zoom every well, month. And, and you know, I, know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It was, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> but actually, you know, now Google is, you know, I just got a solicitation to, you want to have our Google camera drone come inside your business inside your office i'm like hmm, what does that mean in the long term yeah you no, know, but, i have to eat my words yeah and I, I think to a certain extent it proves like how much the internet has become such a tool like for people to right. just get get informed and and like have some of those like experiences that you can have like information sessions or q a's or stuff stuff like that 
Um, yes, so it's great. Um, okay, next question I have for you is, what publicly available material can Jumpstarters access? Like you're talking about all these, uh, you know, you, you can read and, and view reports and look at all this data, um, you know, outside of like Redfin and Zillow. So, so where would you point people to, to like start to get into that? Um, you know, I'm sure everybody in here is a, a real estate fan and somewhat, but uh, for somebody who's just getting started, they might know not what like, they might know what is, are reliable sources or, or what is like gonna cover the important stuff. Got it. So I, we've always loved free. So let's talk about, let's talk about free stuff. Right. Okay. So good start is always your your uh, city's planning department. Mm -hmm. you know, what do they have? Uh, what have they collected? Have there been recent neighborhood studies? Do they have a comp plan that's relatively recent, not 30 years old? You know, you need to to look and see and, you know, reality test the dates of things. Mm -hmm. But you can start there. Um, you can also. Um, that's also a great source to understand investment that's happening like, oh, they're doing new sidewalks or putting in new streetlights or this park's getting redone. You know, th so that's a good source of information. That way, um, census, the Census Bureau, data.census.gov um, is the, uh, the new interface for the Census Bureau. And um, in general, probably uh, zip codes are good proxies for, you know, you could combine some zip codes to represent your competitive market area and you can get census data for that. Uh, Realtor.com. Uh, again, I, I mentioned the commercial brokerage reports. Sometimes they have submarkets, and those are free. You may have to put your name and your, um, you know, your email address in, but in general, you can access those from JLL, Marcus, and Millichap, CBRE. Go to their website. Say I'm interested in Philadelphia. Um, you know, and, and register and get like the latest multifamily report and. Hopefully, it has a submarket that aligns with Germantown or West Philly. Right. So now, go, going back to those the process, and just one of the, the steps in those pro, in that process was demand or finding demand for your property, um, and it was kind of looking into the demographics and things. Is is neighborhood demographics also a thing that you can find on those sources that you mentioned? Or yeah, I think uh, again, you can. Um, the, Hopefully the planning department has, you know, is set up certainly in Philadelphia, it is community, you know, there's a community planner for each part of the city. So they should be able to point you in the direction of, of good demographic information. As I was just saying, the Census Bureau, uh, the American, American Community Survey is the data source um, that's most current with the Census Bureau. And you can get that at the zip code level um, five-year data at the zip code cool. level. So, and then that would pull from the data bucket, right? <laughs> Rather that would be in the data bucket, exactly. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, okay, and, and I guess my last question for you is kind of bigger, so so we can spend a few minutes to talk about it. Um, but now we've walked through the process and the implementation, um, and, and we've proven that you, you know you know what you know what works, <laughs> and, and that's why you're sharing this all with us. Um, but now I want to talk about the the where the pieces fit together um, for the people in this call. Mm -hmm. and, and like when they're approaching an investment and, and I, I use that term in the session description that I think, and, and I, I like it because it's like that build up to when you, you close on a property, like all of that due diligence that you're doing when you're approaching this investment and, and starting to make these disciplined decisions, like you said, um, like, like how, how, I'm not sure exactly how to phrase the question, but I guess I'm getting at as like, like in each of those individual steps, what, what are your recommendations for, for people to like actually employ them um, rather than just like reading about it, taking notes and, and, and imagining themselves do it? <laughs> sure. Well, we talked a little bit about, um, about the field work aspect of it um, and really being on the ground and understanding how the surrounding uses impact your this property let's assume let's assume you are in a due diligence period and you're trying to decide whether to pull the trigger and purchase this mm -hmm. so you kind of have an idea you've narrowed it down you know this part of city of the city you want to work in mm -hmm. um what do you do mm -hmm. so um so you're walking the neighborhood 
you're looking at the surrounding land uses, you're jotting down if you see any, you know, for rent or for sale signs, if you, if you see a name on a lot of signs, you know, Susie Smith is listing 16 properties in the neighborhood. You're going to note Susie Smith. She'd be a good person to interview, right? About what, what kind of interest she's getting. Um, you're going to touch base perhaps with the police precinct um, or the city also has crime data online that's geocoded that you can sort of see on, ma on the map. So you're going to sort of understand, try to understand what's going on. You're going to look at that SEPTA map and um, understand what the transit situation is. You're going to look at Google Maps and see how far is that supermarket? How would someone get there? What's the parking like if, if you think, you know, people tend to use cars? And that's actually an interesting change out coming out of COVID. Is it more people, people who might have been transit only households are reconsidering that. Yeah. And so, okay. um, so that was, that was the field work bucket. Mm -hmm. Um the interview bucket, we're going to interview Susie Smith. We are going to um, start calling comps we know about. Um, mm -hmm. Going into the data bucket, we're going to start looking at um, at the Craigslist and Zillow's and the Trulia's and the, you know, wherever else to start to jot down what competitive, what's on the market, what's being rented in the area so we can follow up. I think we're all aware, right, that sometimes there are teaser, um, teaser listings on particularly a Craigslist type of site. Um, so that's a good place to be thinking about. I need uh, verification of, I can't just assume that that's the right, um, that that's the market friend. That concludes my conversation with President of Real Estate Strategies and RES Advisors, Elizabeth Beckett, about strategies for market research. And next week, I'll be speaking with Dave Spooner, who is the co-founder of a completely free-to-use property management software called Inago, about the benefits that property management software and technology can provide small to mid-sized landlords. The interviews on this program are recorded during Jumpstart Germantown's weekly Jumpinar series, which takes place via Zoom webinar every Monday night at 7 p.m. If you'd like to participate in the live Q&A with our guests, be sure to head to jumpstartgermantown.com events and register for next week's Jumpinar. And if you're interested in starting a Jumpstart program in your own community, be sure to visit gojumpstart.org to see our how-to guide and open source training workbook. Thank you so much for listening to the Jumpstart Philly Real Estate Radio Show on Germantown Community Radio, WRGU 92.9 FM. Be sure to tune in next week.